What's up guys, it's all the Anthony, welcome back to the Civic Vlog that you hopefully know and hopefully love. And in today's video, we're bringing the energy for five things that you can do to make your underpowered Honda more fun to drive. Let's get started. All right, guys, so today's video is going to be a driving vlog, but I am still going to overlay footage for these five things that I am talking about. Now, while this video is geared more towards Honda owners, I'm sure a lot of this stuff can be applied to other makes as well. However, I really do think that this is going to be most relatable to 90s Honda Civic owners such as myself. So let's jump on the road and get started. Number one, the first thing that you can do to make your underpowered Honda more fun to drive would be to lower it. Lowering a car makes a huge difference, but it makes a bigger difference on these underpowered, lightweight Hondas. Now, not only does it make the cars look a hell of a lot cooler, but it actually makes the cars handle a lot better as well, reducing body roll, improving overall handling, and again, just improving the experience and making it more fun to drive. So whether you're lowering a Honda with coilovers or using springs and struts, it makes a big difference. Now, while I know lowering a Honda is nothing new and is probably the most done thing of done things in the done thing world, it makes sense. That's why so many people have done it. These cars look cooler once they're lowered and it makes a big difference. Now the downsides of lowering a Honda is going to be the affiliation of other lowered crappy Hondas and I totally get it. It's not the best thing to be affiliated with, but hey, if you can do it clean and if you can do it right, it's tasteful, it's clean, and it makes sense, similar to what I have done here. Again, for people that don't know, I am on the True Heart coilover suspension for the Honda Civic, and I actually love these. They're pretty cost efficient, they work great, and it's actually a pretty comfortable ride. So that's it, guys. The number one thing you can do to make your underpowered Honda more enjoyable to drive would be to lower it. All right, so getting into number two, the second thing you can do to make these cars more fun to drive would be to pick up a wider set of wheels and tires. Now, I'm not talking about going 15 by 10 and a half or doing something ungodly like that to make this into a heathen of a vehicle, but I mean to do something tasteful, right? Add an extra inch to an inch and a half of width on these cars and it's gonna make a big difference. I mean, an extra inch goes a long way, or at least so I've heard. What? Anyway, so my Honda Civic right here, my 1999 Civic EX, came stock with a set of 14 by five and a half inch wheels. These things are tiny. They are extremely skinny, but they are very light, which is one positive thing. But you can get a lightweight wheel that is wider. So for example, my wide set of wheels and tires are a 15 by seven and a half inch wheel. They are the Koenig Decagrams and they come in at around 11 pounds a piece. Now I tell people on these stock body Hondas, you wanna be anywhere from six to seven and a half inches for that really, really good look. You can go even crazier and go up to eight inches, but at that point you're gonna need some fender rolling and you're gonna to need to do some extra mods or run a ton of camber. But wide wheels, yes, while everybody lowers their car as number one and puts on wider wheels, it does make a difference and the car can handle better. But going back to the basics, Wider wheels, wider tires are going to increase the contact patch in which you have on the road, thus increasing your grip, increasing your traction, and obviously making the car handle better. Now, while some people overdo it and go with an ungodly size just to gain attention, that is not needed. Like I said before, I'm on a 15 by seven and a half inch wheel, and these things are fantastic. They really do improve the handling and the driving experience of the car. So the combination of number one, lowering your car, and number two, widening your wheels and tires does improve the overall fun and driving experience of the car together. Now, if you do one or the other, yeah, it'll kind of help a little bit, but having a wide set of wheels and tires on an unlowered car is gonna look pretty ugly, and having a lowered car on skinny tires is gonna be pretty ugly as well. So you're gonna get the best of both worlds if you do step one and two together. All right, so number three, the third thing that you can do to make your underpowered Honda more fun to drive is actually a two for one, the combination of both the steering wheel and the shifter down here. 
The combination of both these makes a huge difference in the driving experience. So as a lot of people know, I have the AP1 Honda S2000 steering wheel. It is leather wrapped, it looks really cool, it's smaller and it's very, very sporty. This is actually probably one of my favorite mods that I have done to my Honda. Seriously, it makes that much of a difference and I love holding onto this wheel. As many people know, driving is a very visceral experience. We're not driving Teslas here, we're driving underpowered Hondas. We have to grab a steering wheel, we have to grab a shifter to make these things more fun. So improving those grab points is going to make a big difference. So my AP1 S2000 steering wheel is definitely one of my favorites. And then complementing that is down here with my Skunk 2 weighted shift knob. Now this weighted shift knob makes a pretty big difference, but what makes an even bigger difference is upgrading these shift shifter bushings. Now, once you upgrade the shifter bushings, you're gonna get rid of a lot of that slop, and it's actually going to make the gearbox a little bit notchier and feels more sporty. Now, stock, these things are sloppy and feel like somebody's used girlfriend, but you can improve upon that by tightening it up with some upgraded shifter bushings. Now, the combination of these things make a big difference. I love shifting this car. I love driving this car now because of these grab points. Now, here's the thing. Do you need an AP1 S2000 steering wheel? No. You can upgrade to any other aftermarket steering wheel you would like. NRG, you can go to Sparco, you can go to Momo, whatever you'd like to do, I'm sure a steering wheel is gonna be a huge upgrade over the rubbery, crappy steering wheel that comes stock in most Hondas. Now, this one's nice because it does have the airbag. If I were to get into an accident, I at least have that safety net. Now, all these other steering wheels most likely don't have an airbag, so you might mess up your face in case of an accident. So one thing to keep in mind. But I think I've said enough there, that is number three, would be the steering wheel and the shifter combination to improve the driving experience and to make this car more fun to drive. All right, so before we get to number four, I hope you guys can hear me okay because I'm actually on my studded snow tires right now and this road noise is pretty damn bad. So hopefully this video turns out, hopefully this audio turns out because I'm having fun with it. I'm hoping that this is gonna be helpful for people getting into a Honda. So number four, the fourth thing that you can do to make these cars more fun to drive is to upgrade these things right here. Upgrade the seats. Seats make such a huge difference in these cars and I didn't realize that until I did it for myself. Now, if you have the Honda Civic seats from the 90s, you'll know how bad some of those can be, specifically the 96 to 2000 Civic seats. Now, if you have Acura and Taker seats, you're good to go. If you have Honda Prelude seats, you're good to go. If you have Acura RSX seats, you're good to go. If you have EP3 seats, you're good to go. Really, the people that suffer the most are going to be the Civic owners and the Accord owners. Those seats were just absolutely terrible. So when I upgraded to these Del Sol seats, it was a huge, huge upgrade. Not only are the Del Sol seats lower, and again, lower your center of gravity, making the car feel sportier, but they also have better bolstering around the side. Now, the bottom doesn't have the best bolstering, but hell, it's a lot better than what I had previously. Now, a lot of these Honda seats can be interchanged and swapped out. You can put Prelude seats in here. You can put RSX seats in here. You can put Integra seats. You can do a lot of different seats in these vehicles and swap them out back and forth with just a little bit of modification, but the hardest part is is going to be finding a pair in good condition and that was the struggle with when I found these Del Sol seats. These things were pretty tattered and pretty messed up so when I found them I stitched them up put some seat covers on them and called them good and these are my less than $200 seats that I absolutely love. Now there is of course other seat options out there a lot of people will go with some cheaper NRG seats or they'll go with some cheap knockoffs and that's totally fine but you have to remember safety is also another big thing when it comes to seats so you don't want to just be throwing anything on anything and you want to make sure you have all four bolts bolted down and not just settle for three like I know a lot of you Honda people do. Four bolts, make sure it all fits and go with a nicer seat if you can. Now the reason why seats make such a big difference is because like I said before, you get a lot of body roll in these cars. 
lowering it makes one big difference, but throwing in some seats that hug you like your mother never did will make an even bigger difference. So if you've ever sat in a race car, one of the biggest things you'll notice is the seats. Yes, some of them have harnesses and all this crazy stuff. You don't need that in an underpowered Honda. All you want is something with a little bit more bolstering so when you do take a corner and you do take a hard turn, it's gonna be a lot more fun and it's really gonna hold you in place. So you don't have to go crazy, don't to go overboard, don't be a poser, but just get some nicer seats with some better bolstering and I'm sure your back and your butt is going to thank you. All right, so last but not least, and probably the most unexpected, number five, a clean interior. Yes, a clean interior will make your car more fun to drive and more enjoyable to be in. I can't tell you enough how many times I've been in other people's trash bin of a car and wonder how the hell they drive in there and enjoy it. They got bottles clanking around, they got old wrappers, they got all this stuff sitting in their car and it is literally like sitting in a pile of trash. It does not smell good, it does not look good. And when you're trying to make the car have a better driver experience and more fun to drive, you gotta get rid of that stuff. I mean, hell, nobody likes when you take a turn and you hear everything in your backseat fall to one side of the car because you're more focused on what's going on back there than you are on what's in front of you. So having a spot-free interior, removing all the excess crap is going to make a big difference. A clean steering wheel, a clean shifter, some clean seats. Trust me on that, you're going to enjoy it. Now I know that's not the most exciting thing, but let's be honest, that's probably the cheapest thing on this entire list to do. Anybody can have a clean interior, you just need to do it, and other people will notice that. I get more compliments on how clean my car is rather than the mods that I do. Trust me, I have people all the time telling me, wow, your car is so clean. They're not talking about the mods I've done, they're talking literally because it is so clean. So that's it, guys. Number five, last but not least, the cheapest of them all, a clean interior. Now I know some of you might be asking, Anthony, what about an intake? What about an exhaust? Aren't those gonna make an underpowered Honda more fun to drive? Well, not really. Those two things combined aren't gonna be any better than one of those one things that I mentioned in that list. An intake, for the most part, is just gonna make sound, and yes, you can hear the VTEC crossover. An exhaust is going to make sound, and for the most part, not a good one. The Onok exhaust is probably one of the only exceptions for something that actually sounds good. Any other underpowered Honda with an exhaust is gonna be more of a joke, if anything, and like I said, it usually does not sound good. An intake might be the only exception, but I would say that that doesn't even make the car that much more fun to drive. The crossover is nice, but how many times are you really hitting that VTEC crossover in a single drive when you're sitting in seats, touching a steering wheel, touching a shifter, enjoying a lowered car, getting the looks from other people, enjoying your lowered car? Do you kind of see what I'm getting at? An intake and exhaust is not gonna do a whole lot. And while I know there's other people saying, forget the intake, forget the exhaust, just swap it, throw in a turbo kit. Well guys, that would defeat the whole purpose of an underpowered Honda. The whole point was how to make an underpowered Honda more fun to drive, and these are the things that I would recommend doing. Anyway guys, I can go on about that topic for hours, but I wanna leave it simple to that. Those are the five things that you can do to make an underpowered Honda, such as this one right here, more fun to drive. So if you guys like this content, make sure to give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe down below for more so you don't miss any of my future Civic videos, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Salt Anthony, peace.